Hello, my name is Nell and I have things to say about disability, chronic illness and mental health. I live with all of these things, as do many other people, and in my videos on my channel I talk about them. Partly to connect with other people who also live with these things and to let them know they're not doing this alone, but also to reach out to people who have no understanding of what this life is like, and to hopefully offer them some insight. Now if that sounds like something that interests you, I would love it if you would subscribe to this channel. I feel so excited and supported when I see a new subscriber because it it tells me that what I have to say is worth saying and worth listening to. Come back every Wednesday when I upload new videos. I do work hard at being consistent. Let me know what you think of my videos in the comment section and I will do my best to reply. And uh, if you know somebody who would benefit from my videos, then please feel free to share some with them. Now we now have a Labour government and a new Prime Minister starting a whole new phase of Australian government. and. When it was coming up to election time, a huge priority for me when it came to my um, voting choices was looking at the different parties' policies regarding disabled Australians and what they were willing to do for us and how to meet our needs. Some parties had no policies regarding disabled Australians at all. And so now that we are starting um, a new term with Labour government, I want to have a look at the Labour government's policies and promises regarding disabled Australians. I want to talk about them, uh, get them out there, read them, and so that we can all keep them accountable as the term goes on. We can all be aware of the promises they're making, of the commitments they're making, so that hopefully we can keep them accountable. Because I think if more people are aware of their policies, of the promises they're making, then they're going to have to be more accountable. They're going to have more people asking, hey, you promised this at the beginning. How's that going? Where are you up to on that? So I'm going to read you the policies regarding disabled Australians that are found on their website, uh, just so that we can all be aware of what they're promising, what they're committing to us. Um, and if, there, if anything needs explaining or if there are things that I felt needed explaining, I've got little interjections there. So these are their policies regarding disabled Australians. Stop the Morrison government's unfair cuts to individual NDIS plans with an expert review that will guarantee plans are not being unfairly reduced. That has been a huge issue with, uh, with um, major cuts being made to NDIS plans. And it's been a difficult thing where it seems like more money is going into the NDIS, which is true. But at the same time, that money has not ended up in a lot of plans and instead a lot of plans have been cut. Ensure a better future for the NDIS that puts people with disability at the centre of the scheme and includes families, carers, service providers and workers. Review NDIS design, operation and sustainability to ensure that the scheme gets back on the right track. Build evidence with $15 million for a disability for a National Disability Research Partnership and consider continued support for a National Disability Data Asset to ensure future changes to the, dis to the NDIS are based on proper evidence. Now these two things, the National Disability Research Partnership, um, it has experts in disability research and policy who work together to make sure that any policies aimed at uh, meeting disability needs are evidence-based, research-based, rather than just theoretical things to make sure that those disability needs are going to be met in a practical way. And this was begun or founded in um, 2019. So the Labour government wants to continue investing in that and continue using that as a resource. And the National Disability Data Asset is a pilot program. I think it's still in the testing phase. It began in 2020 and it's being tested to see if there are ways of collecting, um, using, gathering information about disabled people, their experiences, their outcomes. If there's a way of collecting and using that information while still protecting the privacy of disabled people. Make the National Disability Strategy accountable by measuring its implementation to ensure that real progress is made on important outcomes like employment and education. Labour will also develop a national autism strategy. And I will mention the national autism strategy later on. Improve employment outcomes with a disability employment centre for excellence that will provide a clearinghouse for ideas and increase capacity among employment services. I couldn't find any information about this 
Disability Employment Centre for Excellence. I think that's going to be something that they will create themselves. Never again leave people with disability at the back of the queue in relation to the pandemic or a future emergency response. I think that would be an excellent improvement because I did find that even uh, being disabled and trying to access extra services, extra supplies during this pandemic was difficult. Um, which it shouldn't be because a lot of people with disability are higher risk when it comes to health concerns and pandemics. Introduce central coordination of disability to ensure real action and recognition for all disabled Australians, not just those on the NDIS. There are so many people with disabilities who do not get accepted onto the NDIS. The NDIS, I was knocked off the NDIS the first time I applied. There are so many people with disabilities who are not on the NDIS and they are so often forgotten because it is assumed that if you are disabled, you have NDIS funding and there is a huge gap. So I would love to see that gap filled and not just we'll get on the NDIS if you want support. I would love to see that gap filled in other ways. Double existing support for individual and systemic advocacy with an additional $10 million over four years to address systemic abuse, neglect and exploitation and support to navigate services. Labor will match additional funding for NDIS appeals providers to cope with numbers of AAT cases. Now, the AAT is the Administrative Appeals Tribunal, uh, which conducts independent merits reviews of administrative decisions made under, under Commonwealth laws. Uh, that includes decisions made by the NDIS. So that's decisions um, such as, you know, somebody getting knocked back from the NDIS, um, decisions about something in the plan getting, um, getting refused, or decisions about nominating, um, having a nominee for a plan. Um, improve disability access through in the community by ensuring, ensuring that there are enough changing places, disability toilets for people with high support needs available across the country. Labor will offer a third of the funding required to build a facility in each of the 400 um, LGAs currently without one. And I will include a website to the changing places uh, website. It's it's incredible because there are such a lack of uh, disability access toilets and bathrooms and I would love to see this more actively pursued. Um, so with the National Autism Strategy, up to 3% of Australia's population has autism and it is the largest primary disability category in the NDIS and yet it is so, so under supported. Labor will take action to address outcomes for autistic Australians with a national autism strategy with $1 million invested for the next year to develop a coordinated national approach between all levels of government and service areas. A total of $2 million for the Autism Cooperative Research Centre so it can continue to be Australia's leading organisation for autism research, coordination, collaboration and advice. We will create a national roadmap to specifically target health and mental health outcomes with a 300000 investment to begin work immediately. Lifting the age cap for people seeking autism assessments from 13 to 25 years of age so that young adults can access a diagnosis and support, which is super important. I was diagnosed at age 30. There are so many more people who are realising the signs of autism much later in life. Specific autism focuses in our commitment to leave no person with a disability behind in the ongoing pandemic response and in our plan to develop a comprehensive NDIS workforce strategy. <laughs> so those are the labour policies regarding disabled Australians. There is a lot. Those are a lot of promises and I appreciate the fact that they have been very practical in some of these, very specific. And the fact that they've been specific means that there are specific things that we can hold them to. Specific things over the years where we can look at it and say, I'm not seeing evidence of this. You've promised us this and I want to see evidence of that. I encourage you as much as you are able to educate yourself on what this government is promising us and then Let's keep them accountable. Let's keep an eye on the promises they're making and let's keep asking them to show us evidence that those promises are being fulfilled. Let's keep ourselves educated and let's make sure our needs get met by the people who promise to meet them. All right, that's all for this one. Bless. <laughs>